The game you see right now is made in just 8 minutes and 23 seconds. And yes, this includes everything. Art, shader graph, lights, shadows, cinemation, trail, gameplay, and of course, random maze generation. In tricked, you should be. And in this video, I will show you the entire process of how I've made it. But before I can even start working on the game, I need to set up the Unity project first. So I open Unity Hub, New, Universal Render Pipeline, Create. Now I need to remove a lot of unnecessary stuff that Unity put in the project by default. Remove examples, remove materials, remove scenes, remove scripts, remove settings. No, actually, don't remove settings, we need that. Remove tutorial info. Remove readme. And because we removed the scene which Unity created for us, we create one in the root folder. Create scene. Now we need to import some packages. Window, package manager, PSD importer, which as it turns out I would not need. and Cinemachin, which, as you will see, I will need. Now, because the Unity created a 3D project for us by default, we need to convert it to 2D. So I remove the extra light, I set the camera to orthographic, I go to Window, Rendering Lighting, and remove the skybox. I press 2D in the scene view, I go to camera, background type, solid color, once again, skybox doesn't make sense for 2D, and set the color to something reasonable, and not the default blue. The final thing to do is to set Unity's preview to the renderer for the game, because we would need lights and shadows. Settings, create, rendering, universal render pipeline, to the render experimental. It is all of the preparation I need, and it doesn't count towards 10 minutes because it has no game-related stuff, and because it is just a basic 2D project setup, which for some reason we don't have an option to create in Unity Hub directly. Preparation's done, it will be pretty hard to cram all of the stuff I planned for the game in such a short amount of time, so I would not be able to comment as I work in the game, and I will leave this job to someone who would do it better than I. Hi everyone, thanks for trusting me this job, and I'm ready to comment on your 10 minute game challenge. Um, you can start if you are ready. Main camera is ready, keyboard camera is ready, Unity is ready, Visual Studio is ready, and Photoshop is ready. I put aside my audio recorder so it doesn't get in the way, and then I start. Yeah. 3, 2, 1, let's go. I start with an art because that is the least reliable part. It only works about 1 out of 5 times, and it would be very inconvenient to have hiccups 4 out of 5 times late into the run. I didn't actually need PSB file here, but when trying to export SPNG directly, Photoshop offers to save it in the wrong location, and it's just faster to save as PSB first. The shading graph I'm about to create right now makes walls bendy. I need mouse for shading graphs, so I try to keep my right hand on the mouse and type what I can with left hand only. Space to create a node. The bendiness effect works by generating noise and using it to shift UV coordinates. Once again, I'm keeping my right hand on the mouse. It will soon become very messy here, but it doesn't matter as long as it works. This is the part where I failed my first run. I forgot to plug in the texture. Typing in some nice, carefully chosen numbers. Now slicing the sprite as usual, but because bendiness effect needs some extra space, I adjust bounding box of the wall. Along with art, it is another inconvenient thing to do when going for speed, and unfortunately there is no option to scale around the center in Unity's sprite editor. 
Now that the art is sliced, I place it on the scene and scale it immediately with R. It is a common theme in this run. I try to minimize object switching because object switching requires mouse movement and mouse movement takes time. Now adding shadow caster. And snapping the shape into place. Quickly assign wall material to the wall and make the prefab out of it. Remove it from the scene. I accidentally focused on the player, but it doesn't matter because we don't need scene view anymore in this run anyway. Now to the lights. All of the values you see here are carefully chosen to produce some nice looking result. Trail render is one of those things which I often forgot during early practice. Luckily I didn't forget it this time. And one thing not to forget with trail renderer is to set the material, even if it's the default one. Quickly create virtual camera and set it to follow the player. I used to add the main game script to the main camera, but it doesn't matter in Unity which object you add your script to, so I just add it here because it's faster. Here is the longest part. In my first attempt it took 17 minutes, which alone is much more than 10. Here I define public variables. Hole P is whole probability, W and H is width and height, X and Y is current position of the player, and H walls and V walls are horizontal and vertical walls correspondingly. Then there are references to objects which I drag and drop in Unity Editor as the last step. Start method is automatically invoked by Unity when the object is created and I will also use it to start a new level. When starting the new level, the first thing to do is to remove all of the objects of the previous one. Here comes the most interesting part, the maze generation. It is probably too much to comment on in this video, especially that the version I'm using here is not the easiest to understand, but the most concise to do the job. One of the things I would like to note though is that the parameters of the DFS method, X and Y, are exactly the same as the player's position. That is not a coincidence. You might already see that I combine maze generation and unity object instantiation. I used to have a separate method for maze generation, but it was just shorter to combine everything together. I'm typing all of the four possible directions and you might wonder what key codes have to do in the start method. You'll see that in a minute. The shortest way to randomly shuffle an array in C-sharp is by sorting it by random value. That is what I'll do here. Here I copied this block of code for later use. During this time I would like to draw your attention to the phone holder. You will see it close up later in the video, but I would like you to start appreciating it right now. One of the tricks I use extensively when typing this code is that I don't type full names. For example, instead of typing Vector3, I only type V3 and Visual Studio completes it to Vector3 for me. You'll see even more aggressive usage of this trick in just a bit. Yeah, here. Instead of typing random.range, I only type r.r .r, and that is auto-completed to random.range. Nice? Nice. And even more so here, newv 3 rr .r, r.r. The loop here is to make sure that the goal is at the very least not too close geometrically to the player.
finally a nice formula to scale the camera. We want the camera to show more of the level as the level becomes larger, but at the same time we don't want everything to become too small. With that, the method to start a new level is finished, and boom, right away I paste the code I copied not long ago. Here I deal with input and that is why I needed key codes in the start method, just so I can copy it here. Whoa, look at my face, my mouth is open, a sign of true concentration. Many tried to fake it, no one could. Final piece of the code, I move the player, check whether it's close enough to the goal, and in case it is, I randomly increase either width or height and then start a new level. The code is done, the only thing left is to assign objects to their slots in the editor. The game creation process comes to an end and with this, my job to comment on it is complete. Bye. It is quite nervous, <laughs> and I still don't know if it will work. So let's test. Run. And yes, it works! Nailed it! I forgot if it's not recorded. Closer! Nailed it! Nailed it! Great! The mace is generated, the goal is set, the player position is set, we have trail, we have shadows, we have lighting, the, we have shading graph working, which makes the walls bendy. And the wall also has a slight bump when you try to go against the wall. Okay, <laughs> now I can. Now I can breathe with relief. Pushing down the time so much was a real challenge. My code went through 8 revisions, starting from 135 lines, spread across many separate methods, and ending up with code with only 2 Unity methods and 82 lines, out of which 8 are just copy-pasted. Regarding the part in Unity, there weren't that many changes. I decided that it would be faster to slice the sprite in Unity than create separate layers in Photoshop. Then I decided not to rename anything and as you can see, like Art0, Art1, Global Light Game Object, CMVM, and also the slices are not renamed, uh, the prefabs are not remained. Like, in my initial attempts, I was renaming everything. I actually renamed wall here. But for the most part, the speedup I gained in Unity was just due to better execution, not any optimizations. I extensively timed all of the parts of the game creation process, as you might see from this table. My first run was 25 minutes, and you need to keep in mind that this is actually a segmented run, so I did not run this continuously, I ran one part, and prepared for another, run another, then run that one, and so on. And it still took 25 minutes. After some practice, the next run was 17 minutes, much faster, but still not even close to 10 minutes. 
And at that point, I was not even sure I can make it that far. I thought I would have to make it into a 15 minute video. I was not sure I can make it 10 minutes, let alone 8.30, which we actually have. But as the time progressed, there were a lot of minor improvements made, which all add up together to really save a lot of time. And once again, better and more confident execution was a huge factor in pushing down the time to just around 8 minutes 20 seconds. With some more effort, the time could have been pushed down to just 8 minutes or even less. What a missed opportunity, what a shame, such a- SHUT UP! And thanks for commenting, by the way. But that is the hard truth. The time could be even lower and being a perfectionist, I'm not really satisfied with my result. But I realize I don't enjoy creating the same thing over and over again, so I have to move on. I would like to take a small detour from the main topic and show you the phone holder I've made for this video. What do you need to record something? You just take out this part, slide in your phone, like this, and place it back. Ready for recording. Perfect. And what do you need your phone back? You just take it out, slide your phone out, like this, and place it back. It is very simple to disassemble and then assemble it back. And as you might have noticed, it stands without a phone, so you don't need the phone to balance it out. But it also stands with. It was only made in about half an hour, but what a masterpiece of applied engineering thought it is. It proves once and for all that you don't need a degree in engineering to create a stunning architecture. It took an enormous effort to put all of this together. I will link to the game and the source in the description, but for now I can finally take some rest. Well, not yet. My job is complete, but you still have to cut the video. Shut up! But he's actually right. I still have a long way to go before you can watch this video. So, like it if you like it, write me in the comments if you would like a tutorial on mage generation, subscribe for more videos like this, and see you in the next one. Bye!